Hey traders, John Hal here. Enough of the people talking about how the stock market is going to crash. The stock market is at the top. Oh my goodness, it's all over. The market's going to crash and all this sort of stuff because I'm hearing this all over the internet. In fact, I don't think that. I actually think something else. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I see, why I'm seeing it and what's happening right now. Mining stocks, silver, gold, indices, let's get into it. Don't place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. So let's get straight into it. Firstly, guys, subscribe, bell button, and you know the deal, guys. Go, that very first thing in the description, go join the Master Trader Lab. You're gonna love it. You get a money back guarantee as well too. Just go get the help you need, all right? I promise you, you'll make more progress the next six months then you have in the last six years, learning the stuff you learn in the Master Trader Lab. Go get it right now, Flat or the 95% off sale, and soon. Moving on now to the Dow Jones, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Oh my goodness, guys, I am hearing this. All that, me, 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 me. All the market's gonna crash, all the market's at the top, the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash. Oh my goodness, market's gonna crash. And it's like, what, are you serious? So you guys, here's the, here's the thing about trading these markets, okay? Firstly, let me see if I can bring up my pop filter here so I'm not popping in your face, popping in your ears. There we go, that's a bit better, that's a bit better. You guys can't see what I'm seeing right now, but there we go, that's a bit better, right? So, one thing that I, here's the, here's the thing about trading, okay? We can, we can ignore reality, but we can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Let me say that again. We can ignore reality, aka what's really happening right now, but we can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Like for example, let me let me give you an example. Back in 2016, right? Let me actually bring up the good old charts through here. Let me go back to the Dow Jones. And you know what? Let's actually bring up this good old blank chart through here. I'm gonna bring up the good old weekly chart. I'm gonna scroll back in time and I'm gonna go back to when the election was happening. All right, this is when the whole election was happening. Now, if you were around at that time, if you're not a little baby boomer, um, and what I mean by that is like a, a little trader baby boomer, meaning that, you know, if you've just opened up a Robinhood account in the last 12 months and you weren't around in 2016, well, this probably means nothing to you, but you can learn from this. You probably won't. Um, but what was happening around the election time? Oh my goodness, right? We had move up, move down, move up, move down. I actually expect something like this happening until the election, by the way. Uh, and then after the election, we're, oh, we're going to go, we're going to make a good move. And I'll share that with you in just a minute. But everyone on the streets, everyone on the streets was saying exactly what they're saying right now. Oh my goodness, crash, tops, marketing, da da da, beep, beep, beep. It's like, are you serious? Really? Like, I, if the herd mentality is saying something, then you need to be completely on the opposite side. Now, not, that's not always true, and you shouldn't just blindly just go follow that. But if you are following these markets, that you need to be following, or it's, it's so important to be following what the market is doing right now, and not what you think or what you hope or what the herd mentality out there is saying as well. So, as you can see here, right, so many people saying the market was going to crash, and we know what actually happened with the Dow Jones, right? We had a nice move, and we had a you know, very nice move up, and it continued up from there. So if my software starts working right now, I'll be able to, there you go. <laughs> it's like five seconds later. And we've had all this, all this stuff through here. Okay, this is the weekly chart. But if I go back to my daily charts now, and you know, the market people say oh the market's gonna crash the market's gonna crash market's gonna crash da, 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 da. you know what we may get some form of a little pullback and what a lot of people have been saying is like oh my goodness john you don't understand look at the nasdaq you know the nasdaq's got this one big gap here and it's got another gap here do you know what the just because we do have gaps on the upside does not mean they need to be filled right now in fact there's three different types of gaps you're going to get in this one here and this one here is likely to be a breakaway gap. This one here is likely to be a continuation gap. And so that tells me that we're probably going to break an all-time new high and run and make another big move. And I would say this sounds really crazy for where we're right now, but I believe we're likely to get to a 13,000 NASDAQ. That's right, a 13,000 NASDAQ. And if I look at the S&P 500, I honestly believe, this sounds crazy, I know, but I honestly believe we're going to hit a 4,000 
S and P 500. Now that's that's what I think, guys. That may not happen, right? That's just me throwing a number out there. There's no mathematical calculations or what a you know Elliott wave or Fibonacci numbers. None of that, right? I'm just like, oh, there's a good old even number. I think it's gonna get up to there. <laughs> But here's the thing, guys. Here's the interesting thing. And I was talking about this with my private clients recently. If I bring up my good old support and resistance signs, long-term support and resistance signs, we have had a lot of problems around these three levels here and this level here. So around about this three, three and a half thousand to 3,600 has been a major level of resistance. And it's had a lot of problems in the past. You can see here, if I bring up my trend lines, see how it had a lot of problems through here and a lot of problems through here right now. So that tells me with what's going on right now, and if they do, I'm not saying they're going to, but if they do pass the stimulus package again, what do you think that's gonna to do to the market? Let, let me, let's actually put this in layman's terms. Market crashes, they come out with atomic bomb stimulus package. What happens to the market six months later? Oh my goodness, it went up. So if they pass another stimulus package, what do you think is gonna to happen to the markets for the next three to six months, right? Because the, the Fed's in control right now, the market, the, the government, they're in control right now. What do you think is gonna happen? Especially when we're at all time new highs, we're probably gonna go for another run, aren't we? Another run, do, 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 do. And we're probably gonna break this level. Once we break 3,600, it's on like Donkey Kong to the upside. So that's what I see. So you can ignore reality or you can or you can ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Trying to short the market right now when it looks like we're trying to looks like we're going to try and break up to all-time new highs again. Trying to pick a top in a bull market is never ever ever a smart idea. Now moving over now through to the good old gold market and we're still hovering around these levels through here. Not really much happening. We haven't broken up. We haven't broken down. I really thought we'd actually break up by now on, on gold, but we haven't. We actually still are in this sort of downward sort of triangle pattern through here, if you can see that. And if I just bring that trend line up through just a little bit more through there, just so I can bring it over, there you go. You can see we're in this triangle pattern here. So if we start to break up and out here, guys, that's going to be a really, really big move out of gold. So get ready, because if it starts to break out and up, then we are probably gonna make a really nice move. Moving on out of silver now, this is the silver, silver. Um, you can see, uh, as you can see, that silver's doing not much, right? Still just going up here slowly and surely. But we are in this overall sort of, you know, call it a triangle pattern once again as well too. Uh, same as the gold, you've got this bit of triangle pattern. Um, this is a long-term level of support and resistance through here, as you can see. So that's a bit of a long-term level. And I'd have to say, we could probably do it through there somewhere. And you can see how it's squeezing up into a triangle pattern. We do have a bit of a strong resistance at that $26 level. So if I bring up my good old trend lines, you would have to say around that 26, once we can start to clear, I'd have to say once we can start to free and clear that 26 level out of this level, then we're probably gonna race up and break up. The major resistance is up here at 29. So we're probably gonna, we're probably, we're, once we break 26, we're probably going to be on our way up to 30 moving forward with that there. So really, really, really nice moves. Um, we had, had a bit of a small update with the GDX and GDXJ. GDX had a small little update today um, and not really much to sort of report on this one here. We Once again, we are still in a bit of a, uh, once again, we are, we are still in a bit of a sort of a, you know, sort of a downward, downward pattern like that. We did have a little bit of a, false breakout here and now we're actually breaking back up. So what you wanna see with this situation here is you wanna see a break above 42 and then once it breaks above 42, uh, then we're probably gonna make an, a run to an all time or an all time new high for the year on the GDX. And moving over through to the GDXJ, sort of the same thing. Let me erase everything off the screen here. Uh, sort of the same thing as well too. We've got this nice trend line coming down through here. You can see where we're at right now, hitting that resistance once again, and we have this false breakout. So I'm actually very long-term bullish on the GDXJ and GDX myself. Um, and we can see we actually had a bit of a false breakdown, and now we had a little bit of a, a little bit of a potential uh, sort of a, a, a sort of a resistance around that $56 level. You can see that candle, and then it ran right back up. So once we break above 60, once we break out of this channel, 
Then we're probably going to raise up to all-time new highs. I'll probably hit 66. And then I'd, I'd, this market loves to run the even numbers. So I, I would say this is probably going to run to resistance and then maybe run up to $70 level there. In fact, if I go to the weekly chart, is that $70 level anything? <laughs> well, look at that. Isn't that a quinky dink? I just said the market loves to run the even numbers. This is on a short term, by the way. Long term, I see this, I see this thing at 170. Not just 70, but 170. Um, but you can see here, right, around that $70 level is actually all that level of support or resistance long term. So it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me, guys, that once we do start the break here, that we will start to see a move up, to, a move up to around about the seventy dollar uh, movement from there. If I use a sort of a one to one projection, and move that up from there to there, and move that over, where is that going to last? Okay, so this last move was from there to there, and then we had this sort of seventy six dollar would be that sort of one to one sort of projection. Let me go back to the. Weekly chart, see if there's weekly darts there. Mm, yeah, not, not really much going on there. So sort of a conservative target for me, guys. If we do start the break up and out on the GDX, we can see that the uh, that the GDX right now, um, let me actually just take that for screen. Uh, I would say that's probably, probably likely to run to the 70 because that's where that 70, 68 to 70 uh, is where that long-term resistance and support is. Hope you enjoyed this update today, guys. Subscribe, bell button. Let me know what you think in the chat box below. Do you think we're actually at the top in the stock market? Or do you think, do you not think? And also, guys, first thing in the description or comment, go go uh, get access to the Master Trader Lab right now. Uh, there's over 10 hours worth of training in there. If you are struggling with your trading right now, I promise you, what you're about to learn in the Master Trader Lab is no fluff, no fillers. 80% of the crap out there you're going to learn is not actually going to help you with the trading. It's good learning it, but it's like, how is it going to help you? I've taken everything out and actually put everything in the Master Trader Lab. And what I've actually put in there is it has actually made a massive difference over my now 16 years of my trading career and things that actually I use every single day. So go do that right now, guys, and I'll see you very soon.